got to the blue belt. Just go to the blue belt. I would like to practice uh, what Rabbi Rosenblum just said. Listening before talking. So I want to ask you the, the shoes to get the questions and answers now the Muslims. After the speeches, just open it for questions. Rabbi Rosenblum. Okay. I am here tonight, push it, first and foremost, very close friend of Rabbi Rosenblum, and he asked me to join, uh, to join him tonight, and Rabbi Sebeck. Poshet, I have decided to take it on because I, even though I'm not involved in the details, but I know that uh, this uh, Moiset, this yeshiva, uh, recently started, refreshed, and is putting in a lot, a lot of kaiches to make it the best program. And I push it, came to congratulate you, the staff and the parents, and to give you chizik and to tell you that you're doing great work and that you should have a lot of its love. I feel uh, totally uh, overwhelmed and like humbled because I don't know how to use this. <laughs> And I don't know how to use this little touch here. <laughs> I do have a smartphone. I learned how to use a smartphone. Uh, but I can just share with you a little bit uh, my neshama that I can share, but uh, technology I don't. I want to make one statement, and I'll open up for questions. And by the way, uh, I don't know if I don't know what if the people are here because it was mandatory to come tonight. So that's an yeah, important question. Passes for the Every, every everybody, is, everybody is sitting so nicely and quietly. I don't uh, in my classroom. It's a little. It's easy. I'm. You could be relaxed. It's okay. You don't have to be so up so tight. And um, I tremendously enjoyed some of the things that uh, both uh, Rabbi Sibek and Rabbi Rosenblum said. I have a lot of comments. That's why I decided, I, as I was listening to them, I, I had so much to share. So I decided I'm just, I'm going to leave it up to you. <coughs> but one thing I will say, two reasons why, in, usually, why um, parents come running to an evening of Chinuch. So if it's a, uh, just an administrational thing, so that's, uh, that totally, that has, uh, that, that doesn't, uh, that's not my uh, department. Mm -hmm. But a very important reason why parents come, because parents are so, um, and, and, and I have to watch what I speak because Rabbi Sebeck spoke about positivity. But the fact is that parents are so uptight and so worried and so scared. This concept of chinech is pashet frightening. And I want to tell you that it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's in as long as you don't, you're not, parents are not coming, can bring themselves to really enjoy it. I, I can't see for somebody to really succeed without enjoying it. And I, I, I'll explain what I'm saying. I, I was speaking to teachers. Uh, one the year, we had the Kinnis Machanachim, and, and we were, you know, the way these, uh, every conference like this works, that you have the workshops in the morning, the workshops in the afternoon, the middle of the day is lunch. And at the point in the middle of the day, you have most of the presenters from the morning and the afternoon sitting together with all the teachers that are listening. <laughs> and they asked me to say that about Taira many years ago. And I, you know, once I had the microphone, I said I wanted to say a comment in addition to the Taira. So I, I said with all due respect to the great res presenters that did an, a fantastic job in the morning, and then there were those who were going to do a fantastic job in the afternoon. 
I wanted to make a cheshme. I wanted a, a, an observation that I had. A presenter who studied the topic. You know, in these conferences, you have uh, a topic uh, differentiated learning, discipline, curriculum, learning, chumish, gemara. Comes in a presenter who went to school, I guess, in, and studied his topic for I don't know how long, walks into a classroom where he has in front of him sitting, adults are sitting there, and not just some adults, adults, teachers who are pushed desperate to hear everything they can get to learn how to make their life easier in the classroom. In the listening and paying attention, the presenter is doing a great job presenting. Bravo, good for you. You did a good job. And so let's make a judgment. Every teacher that's sitting in, the, in this audience walks into a classroom every day facing not one topic that one presenter addressed, but facing in his classroom every topic, not speaking to teachers who are waiting to hear this, not speaking to adults, but speaking to little kids and waiting for reasons. <laughs> and if the teacher did 50% a good job as the presenter did in the room, the teacher did 500 times better. Just, uh, it's a one plus one, it's a mathematical question. And, and the question, my question is, how indeed, how is it possible? We, we underestimate what, how is it possible for, for a teacher to survive? I mean, I'm making a real question. The answer is only one thing. It's only possible for you to do that job if you really enjoy it. That's the answer. If this is an Ashama job and you love the kids and you really are tuned in and connected with them, you can make it. Otherwise, it's impossible. In today's day, the, with a lot of uh, training, uh, but this is not a teacher's evening. I, I, want, well, I feel the same thing with the, in case of parenting. If, yes, there is a lot of situations going on in the home, it's endless. But if we cannot bring ourselves to a place where we push it, uplift ourselves and connect in a way that we really <clears throat> love it and enjoy it and experiencing the kids and being with the kids and taking care of them and figuring out their needs is exciting, it's impossible. This is not what my topic was tonight. <laughs> it's just a comment I wanted to say. And you could open for questions. If you want to ask, I'll talk, <laughs> as long as you leave. You see, I told Rebbe Rosenblum I want to speak less. And the reason why, because I, I uh, walk into a place, I, I can't, it's, it's very difficult to prepare. I didn't know the, the setting, who is going to be here, mother's father, I didn't know, know the details. So I figured I'll be here, I'll figure out what's happening, I'll get the crowd, I'll, uh, I'll hear what the two speakers are talking about, then I'll... I'll, uh, I'll know what to say. But uh, there is another advantage that I didn't tell him, that now I have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question for Rabbi Rose. The same way that we can't... Wait a second. Louder. A question on what he said. Am I allowed to answer? <laughs> and that was just a few. Rabbi's <laughs> better at the arm wrestle. Can answer? <laughs> so my question is as follows. As a parent, you said a story about having a phone on the table, and uh, even if it's turned off, you're going to lose the you're going to lose the impact of the message you're trying to give to that child. So, as a parent, I come home, I'm busy, I'm working, and I have my phone in my hand. Even if I put my phone down, two minutes later it's back in my hand. Now, I love my kids. I want to give my kids all the attention in the world. I want to give them chinuch, ba'avo, with excitement, etc. So, how do I take the transactional part of the information you gave over, which is not going to help me anyways, and what information do you have to actually be transformative to say, before you walk into the house, meaning say, what is going to give me the chizuk or the spark or whatever it might be, take my phone, turn it off and put it in my pocket till 9.30 or whenever my kids finally do fall asleep. 
I'm not following your question. So you, question. You, you asked the question, you gave the answer. No, I didn't give the answer. <laughs> I didn't give the answer. What I'm saying is that this is the struggle. I want to turn it off, but I don't. And I know, not as much as the Michelle you, you've given, but I know that if I don't turn it off, whatever impact I think I'm having is watered down. May not right. So what what is the beginning of a parent to understand that I want to stop? How do I stop and give my kids the full attention? There is an excellent uh, curriculum actually called Digital Citizenship, which may be worthwhile, uh, maybe running a course of Baba Um which really goes through what you know, the digital world is, the dangers, the uh, suggestions um, to deal with. Some people, it's actually an obsession. Some people have to go for counseling. It's like any, you know, it's a, but the, the, the bottom line is that I think you're halfway there because um, the staff. I mean, one of the one of the first suggestions we came up with in Pittsburgh with our schools. We had a meeting with the parents of each class. We came up with like class rules. The parents. We we just facilitated, but the parents came up with class rules. For their, for their, you know, for the parents and the families of that class, so which said things like, we started with for for supper time for an hour, no, everyone shuts off all technology, everybody in all the classes and all the uh, that became the thing. Was there uh, all the recharging? System? Well, all all the recharging happens at a central location outside of bedrooms, things like that. Now accountability. It's, it's, it's just encouragement. One, you know, there's all sorts of web cover and different ways you can set up for yourself. But we set up, we tried to create a culture, community culture, where we were supporting each other, parents and children together, to undertake some of these halatas. Something that's in brief. Yeah. Can I, uh, first of all, thank you for asking a question that many people are thinking, but people don't tend to say. Um, but just, one, there was a slide actually that I skipped in my presentation that I wanted to say. Now I have the opportunity to share it. Probably was a few more jets. <laughs> None of these things are all or nothing, right? When you talk about positivity, right? When you talk about building bridges with your children, when you talk about Chinuch, like Rabbi, Rabbi Markowitz is saying, that you have to enjoy it, that it's super complicated and people are trying to figure out what's going on. It's not all or nothing. It's not, I either put away my phone every single night I give my kids all the attention, or I don't do it and I'm not a good parent. It's, it's a struggle. Phones are designed to be like slot machines that are uh, addictive. It's a hard thing to do. And we live in a world with tremendous amount of stimulation around us. Our kids also want to see what's on our phone or on their own device or whatever else is going on. Right? When we come home, we have to say, I'm going to do something, and I'm going to do something more. And it's better for us to say that I'm trying, and I'm going to try and do more, and be encouraged by my success, than to beat myself up. And that's one of the dangers, I think, uh, when Marcus was talking about uh, going to a kinos b'chantrim. When you go to these conferences, one of the things that happens to a lot of teachers is they sit down and say, wait, it's another thing I'm not doing in my classroom. And they spend the whole day feeling bad about themselves. But really, you have to walk around when it comes to this field, because there's so much to do, and there's really no end. And you have to say, I'm just going to do as much as I can, and I'm going to be encouraged by my success and do more. So, thank you. I will also thank you for the question. I'll take it over to a bigger. This is a perfect example of what, I, what I'm trying to bring out. And I'll give you now a, a, pra a more practical examples to explain. In everything, there is a goof and there is a neshama. So you ask the question, Rabbi Rosenblum answered you, that there is a digital, I can't repeat it, digital, <laughs> digital citizenship, fine. So everything has, uh, yeah, I like very much what you said, the, the transactional and transformational. This, this is why I need to come to this, uh, <laughs> I need to learn these uh, English uh, terms, it's Givaldi, okay? Um, but beside, I would like to talk about the Neshama. So you were describing a situation of coming home and you have so much and, and you don't want to put away your phone or you want to put it. Let me describe a little bit a home, a coming home situation with a personal uh, experience that I trained myself as a father and we'll take it from there. So every, every family in a different way 
the father goes out to work in the morning, and today's world also the mother, but I was uh, sharing this story in uh, places where never, ne not necessarily the mother goes to work, but that's fine. Father goes out to work. We don't have to uh, um, elaborate on the, comp the tremendous uh, difficulty that could go on in a day for a, a man going to make panasa and making business and how many things could go wrong or even going right and, and it, it's a covering the bank and it's a day of work that you could push it uh, you all your coaches are being taken out in the meantime the mother especially if she goes to work or if she is home she's busy cleaning taking care of the baby and cooking uh, a full day of work Three o'clock comes around, and the preschool kid comes home, crying, <laughs> um, uh, can't do, quetching. Four o'clock, the elementary school, the uh, primary school kids uh, come home. That my teacher was not nice to me, my friend uh, bothered me. Five o'clock, the middle school kid comes home, totally in a anger, in a, he's like, after all day of the mother can't wait till the father comes home and takes over. She's there a whole day cooking, cleaning, washing. She can't wait. The father, who <laughs> works hard all day bringing panasa, is waiting to come home and be served supper and go in and read his paper or whatever he should do. Right? Now everybody here is right because the mother is right and the father is right and the kids are right. But what happens is that at that moment, when the mother waits for the father to come home, and the father waits for the mother to serve them, and the kids wait for their parents, at that moment is an explosion. And it's not funny, by the way, it's real. This is real life. Every day it has a different shape and, 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 and a picture, a different tzior, but it's real, right? now. When I say explosion, it's, there is a lot of, um, the Alter Rebbe Negev Sachuva says that Kores, the Chiyuf in Kores is on the Aveda, that there is a Chevel, a, a rope, between the Neshama uh, that's in the goof to the Neshama Lamaila, to the Chelikel Kaim Amal, and the Aveda from Kores is, uh, uh, is a, there are some Avedas that cut Chas V'chalil, cut that rope. But then the Alter Rebbe says also there is sometimes a lot of smoke, and each rope has, is put together from a bunch of uh, strands. 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 And uh, each uh, small Aveda is cut through the little, the little uh, strands, strings, and then Chas V'chalil from a bunch of small Avedas can also. So what happens in our homes is that not when I say there is an explosion, this picture that I gave uh, before is, it, it doesn't happen every day, a chorus explosion, total cut. But the every day building up these kind of feelings, the, the kids don't feel protected and safe, and they don't know it, but as time goes on and as they grow older, the feeling becomes more um, real and sometimes it's conscious, sometimes it's subconscious, but then, in the end, it's out of hand, and you can't uh, uh, get, take control of the situation. So I said to myself um, that, and it, it's all psychological, because I started thinking to myself, and this is, our children are married, we have one child at home, so it's a different setting now. Now it's about the coming to you. But the, kid, the little kids growing up, and I said to myself, wait a minute. Such a, it was an old day, and I was a teacher all years, and then, and then a principal, but you know, uh, being uh, in, a, in school, it, it's, it's enjoying, but still it takes your kishkas out, and you're exhausted. And I said to myself, you know what? The most precious thing you have is a child. You think about the baby when you when you cuddle a little baby, right? So coming home, plop into the couch, and you take one kid on the one lap. The kid comes 
crying to you, the kid comes on your lap, the other kid comes crying to you, the other kid comes to you, and then the, baby, the little one sees, he also wants to come, go on my shoulders. <laughs> and we sit there for a few minutes, and whoo, and in five seconds, you diffuse, because these kids didn't need anything. They needed just a feeling of someone they could fall on. And when they came in, the mother couldn't handle it because the mother waited, the father should take over, and the father uh, waited, the mother. So sometimes it's not even camels. It's not even a, a, a big amount. You're talking about the phone ahead, the phone ahead. By the way, I'll share with you something very special tonight. Then you go. Of, wait a minute, because of the phone that you said, I want you to remind me. Something very special will help your uh, statistics. But, um, but, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes of that feeling. And all of a sudden, it just diffused. You know, I had in Muncie when I, we, has a, we have a thing in Muncie, but you don't have, uh, maybe in Crown Heights, maybe in Br Brooklyn. Brooklyn it's not so much, because there's buses for everything. But the way we had, when the kids were growing up, and we had this thing of carpool. You know what carpool is? They say when, I heard once in Muncie from a school, principle that when David told Parry that the 11 packet will be carpool, he let the east now. <laughs> carpool. And at one day, I said to myself, you know what? <laughs> Think about, you know, sometimes we need to go remind ourselves of some scary moments in life to appreciate. <coughs> okay, and I can share with you some scary stories if you want. But I... I said to myself, carpool, so, at the end of the day, what do we do at, at carpool? You're with your kid, another five minutes, another ten minutes, hush up as best as with Satine and Dilemma, there is something better in your life. How much do people cry for this child? How much do we ask for it? So, that's it, what, what, what's better? What, what's better activity than spending another ten minutes? In once you come to the conclusion that this is what you live from, and this is where your enjoyment is, you have no problem with statistics and phones and uh, all the other garbage. Because then it becomes a technical question. If the kid knows that there is nothing more important to in my life than them, okay, so right now there is a technical thing and I need to be there. But if I just have to prove it, then I'm not sure if putting away the phone will even help. But just to go uh, back to what Rabbi Rosenblum said before about the phone, Interesting thing that I heard tonight, that even if the phone is turned off, so, Rabbi Rosenblum, I speak a lot, and I don't know if people here saw me before or heard me before, but if they did, they probably heard me mentioning. Anybody here heard me before? We have our youngest daughter, that's not married, that's still at home, uh, who was um, born at uh, 24 weeks. The woman know what that means, maybe some of the men too. She was, in the fifth month she was born and she weighed like one pound. She is uh, turning 17, Leah and her in a couple weeks, and um, she's the most adorable kid in the world. Sorry, my daughter. She is lovely, amazing, wonderful kid, in, in advanced in every area, but she's totally blind. And um, last year she was actually in Beslivka for the Shabbaton, so maybe some of you, uh, she spoke to the girls in Beslivka, and she uh, performed a concert. She can tell me. She's blind. And we really spend time a lot, and we are so connected in this. Tati, you are looking at your phone. This kid is totally blind. She, Boshe, can tell me if I touch the phone. Okay, but that's because you're always on the phone. <laughs> <laughs>
Aj núra ve rozumu je znak na pijere vo itra. I just want to add one point because you went to the shop because that's which is of course important. There's a uh, if you email me afterwards, there's a nice post. get back to the go for a second. There's a nice contract or like a, a guide like that you can have set up for your family along these lines, four, five, six different practical things if you wanna that you can take a look and have a discussion first with your wife and then and at a certain point bring in the children to it. So just to help guide you. Back, back to the book. And in the Chaz V'chalila, we, both of us, are, besides being very, very close friends, but we work together, Taki, in this thing, because everything needs a goof and a neshama. Because a neshama, without a goof, is, uh, doesn't work either. So we have to have a structure, we have to have a seder, we have to have rules, and all these rules, uh, practical ideas, and practical tips. If you have it also on paper, I see they want to give them. I don't sure. like to take a paper. But, um, but we cannot forget about the Neshama. And I just want to share a story. Uh, you can ask a question. If you want to ask a question, it's open for questions. But if not, I want to share with you a, a couple of stories. Yes? It's actually for um, Rabbi Gantz's next book. The story did actually happen. Um, my son, Ben, last year was in 318. And he was very upset about something that happened in class. And he was talking to his very wise big sister who's in second grade. And he's, he couldn't stop. He's going on and on. So his sister said, well, who can you talk to in school that will help you? And he said, Rabbi Turk, I'm going to speak to Rabbi Turk about this. And um, <laughs> um, and I was thinking to message Rabbi Turk to let him know, like, this child really has something that's really bothering him. So, you know what? I'm going to leave it up. I'm not going to message anyone. I'm going to see how this plays out. And um, went to school, he came home and I wanted to ask him so badly what happened. But he didn't confide in me, he confided in his sister. So I had to wait till she came home from school. And she first thing, oh, Mendel, how did it go? Was, you know this? I saw Rabbi Turk in the hallway and I said, Rabbi Turk, I need to talk to you. And Rabbi Turk said, this seems important. Let's go to my office. He goes, and he shut the door when we went into the office. <laughs> and he goes, and I told Rabbi Turk, so he said, and then what? what doesn't matter, right? Turk's going to take care of it. Um, so. What do you tell them? <laughs> you shut yourself, put it in the drawer. Question? I saw a message, someone sent me a message recently, Vinay Gaya, to what you were just saying. That for every problem and everything that you com that we complain about, instead of saying, oh, I'm so tired, say, Baruch Hashem, I'm so tired. Just by changing that one word from oh to Baruch Hashem, if you try it out, it's actually very practical advice and it's a really easy change. So just one akuda on this uh, topic that I was supposed to speak about, understanding your child. The Frieger Gerebe in Klole Chinech Vadroche speaks about this in, in great length um, in the most beautiful way. But. What time? I'll, I'll, I'll say this one, uh, we'll finish the point where there's a shul here, we have to go down. But uh, basically, we every parent, it's so easy and, and so normal, and we invest so much to uh, every mother and knows, right, the kid is born, understanding the, the needs, uh, what type, uh, what the ch if a child is scratching and crying, a uh, baby, the baby doesn't tell you if they, if they need to eat, if they need to sleep, or the, a change of a diaper, or... Uh, this is the whole life of a mother that you figure out and you are connected and you figure out what the what it is that the child needs. And interestingly, is that so with the, with adults um, ourselves, everybody 
knows and is figuring out themselves uh, what they are good at, what type of work they should do. It's all about understanding, uh, understanding uh, when it comes to medical needs, uh, we have the physical needs, we put in, we invest so much, but when it comes to emotional needs, the Friedrich Rebbe says <laughs> that uh, understanding the emotional needs of a child is not less but more important than understanding the physical needs. So basically what happens is that the child comes up, so I'll share with you a story. So straight to the point because uh, it's going to take too long, but the story is a story. So I come to this uh, school and I'm told about a, a boy in high school who is um, causing a lot of trouble and is not learning, disturbing the class, and then they tell tell me that he has a girlfriend and, and he's talking to others about his girlfriend. The teacher is upset, the Apollo gets upset, the parents are upset, the parents get upset with the, the school, the parents get upset with the child that the triangle that the OVC bag made was. I come in to the school, I say, fish around a little bit. It turns out the situation goes like this. This is a kid who couldn't, was not for some reason accepted by, by his uh, friends. Now, everybody knows the Gemara, the Chazal say, oi chavrusa, oi mesusa. The worst thing for a person is uh, if socially they're outcast and they're being left out. This kid tried, made every uh, effort to try to find uh, chen by his friends, and he was basically rejected. He found himself a, a girl and wanted to buy some points. So he, uh, he wanted to buy some points by the friends. So he started sharing with them. And, 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 and uh, instead of that, they, they were making even a bigger joke from him. It turns out this kid was left with, with no one and just getting more involved with his girlfriend. And now his parents, which was the only place where he was still going home to a safe home, his parents got so angry why he has a girlfriend. And it was, when I came into the picture, I, um, I met a boy and I said, said to the boy, Moshe, let's call him, I want to help you. And he, said, he says to me, Rabbi, I see you're so kind, you want to help me, but I promise you, you cannot help me. He, he figured, what am I going to help him? I'm going to tell him to drop the girlfriend. So I said to him right away, he didn't know how much he knows, and I said to him right away, Moshe, look, you have a relationship with your parents, there is a relationship with your teachers, there is a relationship with your friends, there is a, there is a relationship with the Ebishter, there is a relationship with your studies, and there is a relationship with the girl. I'm not, I'm not bothering you. You can, you can have the relationship with your girl. I want to help you with the other, to fix all the other. The moment he heard that, what? This rabbi, with the long past, is, is telling him it's okay to have the relationship with the girl. As soon as I said that, he opened up. The rest of the story is, is not the gay. I can only tell you he's married, he survived, he had a tremendous atzlocha eventually, but the point was one thing. This boy didn't want a girlfriend, this boy didn't want to make trouble, this boy was posh it. Uh, dying to get some connection with his friends, and he was lost. And nobody heard, and nobody understood and if, uh, and that this is what he needs. And with just understanding what, it, what because a kid is not going to come home and uh, always tell you what an embarrassing experience they have in class. So that's why we are, the Alter Rebbe in Agdoma Fintani, and with that I will finish, says, Moshe Rabbeinu is What's the criteria of Moshe Rabbeinu? The Chazal say it. Al Tereb brings it in the Agdom of Tanya. She yochel lahalach neged rucha shelechet vechet. The uh, criteria for Moshe Rabbeinu is that he can relate and understand each individual from Klam Yisrael. Every mother and every father is a Moshe Rabbeinu to their family. That is 
the, the, what you can, uh, a good thing to conclude the night with. We are the Moshe Rabbeinu from our children, and the criteria of that is to be able to relate, to understand, and to figure out what's bothering, and it, I promise you that with understanding, uh, uh, I was asked in a, in a survey, uh, what is the most uh, best thing a parent could do for the chinuch of their kids? What's the most important? And my answer was, if you understand your child's physical and emotional needs, um, your child will be safe. L'chaim, l'chaim. I just want to say to that, that uh, that, 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 that saw a place that, when I was, before I was at Ocean Park, when I was at Dar Menachem, there was a student that no one was able to have a tzlacha with, and there was one thing that we were able, it was in a really bad place, everything was falling apart, and if the only next step, everyone was kick him out, they called his parents, whatever, whatever. And the next step was that I took him out to the store, bought him a snack, and we had a conversation. And it made no sense, because at that point, he should have gotten punished. Why was I giving him a reward? But that was the only thing that reached him. The fact that someone was able to care and someone was able to say. So if you're ever in a situation where things are moving in the wrong direction, find something positive to do. It'll short circuit the whole experience and it'll make a positive experience. I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank the hosting the event together with the PTA. Thank you very much. We look forward to doing this again.